This is an original Stanley number 66 beading tool with a patent date on the casting of 1888. This is our version, not quite that old. And I'm here to talk about how to sharpen the blade, how to use the tool, and do maintenance. The beading tool comes with two fences, one straight one to guide it along the work and one curved fence for large inside radiuses. The blade is held in with a simple clamp mechanism. And the way I set the depth of the blade is to sight down the sole of the tool and set it so the blade profile is just protruding fully below the sole. Tighten the little clamp up. If the blade has a really large profile like this one, I like to set it about halfway first and then set it uh, all the way down for the finished cut. <clears throat> now to adjust the fence, put the blade on the tool where you want it, slide the fence up to it, and lock it down tight. There are a couple of uh, common problems that people have with beading tools. One is chatter. Another is the fence moving on them because of putting too much sidewards pressure on the beading tool. If for some reason uh, you have that problem and can't avoid it, you can always put the second fence next to the first fence on the tool and that will help stabilize it. But you don't need to put a lot of sideward pressure on this tool at all. So the technique I like to use for the beading tool is rest it on the leading edge of the casting, the body casting. Rotate it down until the blade is just touching. And don't put much pressure on the blade until you get it established in the cut. And what you need to do is concentrate on keeping it straight at this stage putting a little more pressure on it as you establish the grooves. In this case, the double bead. Now, the chatter question is usually relieved by the fact that you are not pressing down on the blade too hard. If you encounter chatter, lighten up. But, if you find that you have a rough finish on the cut as a result of chatter, you can simply turn the tool around and go back the other way. If the chatter is severe, be careful not to push down too hard at this point and just smooth everything out and then you can lean on it a little more firmly. At this stage, we really don't need the fence at all. Most woods with uh, fine grain like cherry, um, you can cut with a beading tool from either direction. If it has a very strong grain like oak or maybe ash, you might um, find that it will cut better in one direction than the other. However, uh, the cure for uh, chatter is still turning the tool around and working, from the, um, working the other way. Now we need to talk a bit about sharpening blades. A beading tool blade is probably the simplest of all woodworking tools to sharpen. The uh, end is honed or filed at right angles to the sides of the blade. Since the blade is installed in the tool at a slight forward angle, and this is really a scraping blade, the way it works, but since it's at a slight forward angle and the uh, end is sharpened 90 degrees, you actually have two cutting edges. So if this one gets dull or isn't cutting well for you, all you have to do is turn the blade around in the tool and you have a fresh edge. 
Now I like to prepare uh, the beading tool very briefly on a water stone before using it. I'm not going to use water for this illustration, but I just take it and hone it a few times on each side. This is a thousand grit water stone, it could be four thousand, just to uh, shine things up a bit. And that's really it most of the time. Eventually you may have a situation where that doesn't provide you with as good a cutting um, finish as you'd like. Then you have to work the profile itself. <clears throat> now to do that, there are all kinds of options. There are slip stones. These are both, both oil stones. There are uh, diamond files. There are ceramic files. You can take a piece of dowel and wrap some abrasive paper around it and use that as well. Almost anything will do. Re on, on the coarse side, too, you don't want to go too fine. You'd be all day doing it. So I'm going to show using this oil stone, which I have not put oil on. Normally I would. Small radius to edge just about fits in there. And I would hone it with a stone at 90 degrees to the blade, very lightly. until I'm satisfied. But it's a much larger shape. You can still use the narrow edge of this since that one's a little too big to go in there. And just roll it as you go. Or in this case, a, um, a dowel with a piece of abrasive on it might work better. That's really all there is to it. A little oil, wipe it off, and you're ready to go. Now, one of the neat things about the beading tool, which makes it especially interesting for hand tool work, is that you can take a blank of steel. We sell a um, little pack of five of these. You can take a blank of steel, Draw a profile on it that you'd like, perhaps from a piece of molding that you're trying to match. And with chainsaw files, <coughs> shape it. I would, uh, if I was going to actually do this, I'd prefer to do it in a metalworking vise. But there again, you'd file straight across. Use smaller or larger files, depending on the size, until you get the shape you want. If it's uh, appropriate, you might actually uh, find it easier to grind the rough shape on a bench grinder and then use um, chainsaw files to finish it off. <coughs> the blanks are soft enough so that you can file them. They're not hardened. It's not strictly necessary to harden them. They'll last quite a long time without being hardened, and you can resharpen them with chainsaw files. But if it's a uh, shape that you think you're going to use a lot, this is A2 tool steel. You can heat it up with a torch fairly easily and uh, let it cool off and it will harden on its own, at which point you need to polish it on both surfaces and in the, in the shape as well. But that way you can match all kinds of moldings very inexpensively and effectively. Thank you.